Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make a bunch of jewelry and we're gonna make it by being inspired by our sponsor, Annie's Simply Beads Kid of the Month Club. I love to make jewelry, but I don't do it all that often, so sometimes I can't think of ideas or I just keep making the same thing over and over again, which is fine if you're getting ready for a craft fair, but if you wanna just explore and learn new things, it can just feel a little limiting. So what I love about these kits is that you get really great instructions, you get all the supplies you need to make it, but then you can save your instructions and apply it to the supplies you already have. For instance, I made this necklace from the Jaded kit and I thought it was just so pretty. I loved the clusters of beads on the chain and I thought, you know, I got chain, I got beads, maybe I could do this with what I have already. So that's what I did with this necklace and it was so fun to do. And then I went ahead and opened up this kit which had five different pairs of earrings. I made the earrings and then I started rifling through my stuff to see what I could substitute and get very similar um, techniques. Use the techniques I learned with the stuff I had to come up with even more ideas. And then a lot of times those ear ideas spring more ideas and then more ideas. And before you know it, you have a whole wardrobe of new jewelry to enjoy. The Annie Simply Beads Kit of the Month club is a monthly kit club. Your first kit will be 50% off. Just click the link in the video description to get your first kit. Plus you're going to get a four-in-one tool. So all of the um, all of the projects you're going to make in here you can make with this tool. You don't need to go buy a bunch of expensive things. And that first kit is only going to cost you $9.99. Plus you're, you'll get that free toolkit. You're also going to get a, um, a beading mat and a beading guide. So you get those three things for free along with that first kit. Now every month you will get a new kit and it costs uh, $19.99 plus $5.95 postage and handling for United States residents or $6.95 if you're in Canada and if you don't love a kit you can send it back within 21 days and you owe nothing. So it's kind of like a subscription kit club that has an out if you're not in love with a project. But I do encourage you, even if it's not a project you think you normally do or you would really enjoy, try it because it may spring an idea for something else. Even if you're not in love with a color, that might make a beautiful gift for somebody. So I think that if you can try a subscription club that teaches you something every month, it's a really good investment in you and your crafting because if it helps you use up your big crafty stash like I have, then it is totally worth it. So without further ado, let's go over to the craft table and I'm going to show you how I adapted the designs from the Simply Beads Kit of the Month Club to the stash I already had and created some brand new stuff. So let's go to it. My first design inspiration comes from this beautiful necklace here. And the pattern is in the jaded kit from Annie's Simply Beads Kit of the Month Club. And I love necklaces with dangles on chain. I think it's such a pretty effect, but I don't think to do it very often. And they even had some earrings that have those little dangles as well. So here you can see the necklace, which is really pretty. But to be honest, I prefer more color and sparkle in my design. So I think this would be a gorgeous um, piece of jewelry to give as a gift. And the earrings are really pretty too, but for me, I love color. So taking inspiration from this, I decided that I would use some of my colorful bead for, beads for my stash. And the thing that was really nice about this was that I got to go through my boxes and boxes of beads because I sort them by color and I got to just kind of pick and choose and play with some different um, finishes and textures. I got some frosted beads. I've got some faceted glass shiny beads. I've got some beads with like some dichro foil in the middle. And I thought that was just a really fun, um, a fun way to get going on my um, projects here today. So what I'll be doing is taking each of the beads and I will be just doing a simple loop. So I'm going to go ahead and take a take a, um, a page from the Annie's Kit Club uh, recommendations and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure I get all of these dangles made and then I'm going to attach them to the chains because I used to go just like one at a time can you see that? I'll just do that to every bead. I would go, I would like put one thing on, hook it to my chain, make one more, hook it to my chain. It would take me forever to get anything done. And here, like when you look at your pattern, it says, okay, you need to make, uh, you need to make 71 of those. So you just do that. And then when you go to put your stuff together, it's so much easier. So that's my inspiration piece number one. I also have some earrings, some beads for earrings, but I'm not going to do the chain dangles uh, because I, my silver chain is bigger and I think that might be a little too bulky for earrings. Um, plus, I think by the time I'm done making all of these dangles, I'm going to be all dangled out. So, uh, uh, so I'm going to do this and I'll show you how it looks when it's all done. And I think this is really pretty too, but I like a little flash and splash in my jewelry. 
I wanted to share this jewelry making tip with you um, because it really helps, especially if your eyes get strained after working for a while. And this is just a little tool called like a little helping hands tool. And you can get them at like Harbor Freight for $5 or you can pay a little bit more at like online jewelry suppliers, but they have these little clamps and they can hold your chain while you're putting on your beads like I am here. I start with a center bead and work my way around just like it says to do in the Annie's Kit Club instructions. Um, but the nice thing is I can flip this over, this magnifier, and I can see my chain really well. And um, then I can go ahead and hook on my beads and I'll show you how I do that. So then you'll just know how to build a necklace if you're doing it at home with your stash. So I made, I put um, wires, made loops on all of the beads that I showed you on my bead board, just like the, just in the same way I did before. And then what I'm going to do is just slide it into its own link. Now you could skip links if you want. I'm putting one in every link, just like I did on the Annie's necklace here. So I'd have more of a compact, um, you know, cluster of beads. And then you just go in and you close the loop. And I think with like the the thing I will tell you that's a little bit more difficult with this shiny um, the shiny silver material is that there's so many reflections that it can be a little tricky to um, to see where you're going. Whereas on the um, this a kind of antique gold, it, there was not so much reflection. So even though the holes are smaller in the chain, you didn't have that reflection, um, so you could see pretty well. But I'm telling you, this is like the best five dollars I ever spent because my eyes get really tired. I wear glasses anyway, and it really is a lifesaver when you're working on projects like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of my beads onto my chain, and I'll show you how it turned out. And here is the finished necklace. I am so pleased with the way it came out. It's a little heavier than the um, than my inspiration piece because I used a chunkier chain and these have some pretty big beads on them, but I just absolutely love it. It's a perfect length for me and it was so much fun to make. And then I didn't do chain for the earrings. Instead, I decided to do kind of like a rainbow of uh, some other beads that I had. And I really like the way that came out. And there's no way I would have thought to do this if I didn't have the inspiration pattern from my Annie's Kit of the Month Club. This first design from the kit I showed you with five earrings was pretty neat. I hadn't made um, earrings with a ring in the center like that and I thought it was kind of fun. So first off I decided after making these I would look and see what I had for supplies myself and I found that I had these kind of funky spacer beads that I thought would work for that center ring. So um, let's go ahead and make this earring that is inspired by this one. Um, so what I'm going to do is just take a head pin and put it onto a just a imitation pearl there from my stash. We all have earrings, we uh, beads we bought like clearance and stuff like that or maybe we have a couple uh, left over from a project. That's great for earrings because you only need two. Now I need a little bit longer of a wire than I would need for a simple loop so I'm going to give myself about three quarters of an inch and then I am going to pull the wire up to my fattest part of my pliers and start rolling it up so that I end up with a really big loop, okay? I gotta have this loop big enough that it's going to go through my, um, uh, that, that kind of ring bead that I have, okay? And I'm just gonna give it a little twist to open it. I haven't fully closed it because honestly, I should probably use like a dowel or a, or a jump ring maker to make a, a round loop, but I want this to be something that everyone would be able to do with basic supplies. So I'm gonna slide this on. This is a spacer bead, like for a, like a Pandora style um, bracelet. And I'm just gonna put that on there and then I'm gonna close it up. And that way nothing can fall off. So there's our bottom. And then what I'm going to do is um, open up a fairly large jump ring. I like to use two pliers when I'm opening jump, jump rings just because it's a little bit easier for me to handle. And I just hold either side of my ring and give it a little twist to open it. And you have to open it pretty wide so that it can go on the um, on that ring. And I have to... <laughs> That's tough for me to do on camera because I'm holding this pretty far away from my face and I and I like I mentioned before I like to see things close up and I chose an ear wire that's got a little like a little bead on it because I thought that'd be a nice touch um, because this is just going from ring to ring I thought having a little bead there would be nice um, so some of your earring wires have those and some don't 
I always uh, make sure I use up one packet of ear wires before I open another one for that reason because sometimes you could think you're getting the exact same thing but one has like that little spring and bead and one might the next one might just have the spring and no bead. Now I do have to close this up pretty well because I do have that uh, ear wire on there so I'm gonna try to do that on camera but if I can't then it might just go out for a bit and I do have that video with basic beading techniques that I will link up in the video description so that if you have any if you need to see close up um, tutorials you can there we go I think that's pretty good I'll look at it under my magnifying glass in a few minutes to make sure it's good but there we go there's my first um, pair of earrings inspired by the ones from the Annie's kit well I was looking through my stuff and that's the best thing to get inspired is to go through your stuff and see what you have when I was looking through my stuff I found another Pandora spacer bead but this one had rhinestones on it and I thought wouldn't it be pretty to mix it again with a pearl like I did there, but kind of stack things up with a, um, with kind of like a uh, teardrop style bead. So that's what we're going to do next. This is a simple strung bead um, and it just has a cool look because of the types of beads we're using. So first your teardrop with the skinny side up, then our rhinestone spacer uh, Pandora style bead or European style bead slide that out of the way so you can see and then we're going to do a small lavender kind of colored pearl and we are going to do a smaller loop so I'm just bending this about an eighth sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch above that bead so I make a right angle then I'm going to trim off um, so I just have about a quarter of an inch of wire left I usually put my hand next to it so I can catch it so it doesn't fling off. I'm always afraid of it going in my coffee or something. And then I am going to grab it fairly close to the front of my pliers because I want a small loop because it's just going to go on an ear wire. And I'm just going to roll it up so I get a perfect little circle there. Isn't that dainty and lovely? Then I'm going to give this a little twist to open it or you can always open up the ear wire side if you prefer. Um, you know, you might want to open up the ear wire side. If you had a difficult time with your head pin and you, felt, and you were like kind of messing with it for a bit to get just the right size and you think you might have weakened it, best thing would just be grab a new head pin and start again. But in case you didn't have another one or you didn't want to do that, then open up your ear wire because that would have had less stress on it. But there we go. We have another pair of earrings inspired by the one from the kit. These next earrings I'm going to show you are really fun. When I was putting this um, kind of like imitation shell uh, earring together, it might be real shell actually, I was thinking wouldn't this be fun to do with sequins and then it would be super lightweight. These are pretty lightweight as is, but they'd be very lightweight and perfect to do with like a kid's birthday party craft. And um, something else I want to show you about this kit here, and this is the earring kit I've been inspired by, um, is that it came with some clip-on findings. So if you've never seen these before, you can get these um, in a dangle form like this or you can get them in a, like a kind of a close to your ear more of a, like a post style and what these do is allow you to do the same designs you would do for a pierced ear dangle earring um, but to do it in a clip-on format for either children or adults that don't have their ears pierced and then instead of um hooking your earring to a you know a, like a fish hook style earring or a lever back earring you would hook your earring into that loop right there so these are really handy um, they came in this kit uh, but if you don't have this kit you can find that in any craft store as well so after making these, I dug through my sequin uh, mix and I found some really cute sequins and they are so easy to put together for this earring. All you're going to need is a jump ring and I've got one right here and you just want to open it up and like I mentioned before, I like to use two pliers and if you need to see slower instructions on opening jump rings, closing jump rings, all of that stuff, please refer to my top 10 techniques for bead making video. Now after that's opened, you are just going to string on your sequins, I'm going to move those out of the way, uh, from front to back. So I'm going to put my butterfly on first. And you can get sequins like this in any sort of sequin assortment from the craft store. Then I'm doing this uh, round, big round one. Look for sequins that have the holes close to the top of the, um, of the sequin so that they will dangle like that and they won't get caught up in the jump ring. And then I'm going to put this uh, long oval one in behind. And then I am going to put on an ear wire and I just want to make sure that the loop of the bump of the ear wire is going to be facing is going to be on the same side as my butterfly so it would go that way and then close my ring up and that's all there is to it 
And there you have a very sweet set of super lightweight earrings. These would be so fun to wear to the beach, so lightweight and just really pretty and fun. And they have a great sparkle to them as well. These next earrings are really fun because honestly, they remind me of ballerinas because they just kind of like really dangle. It almost look like legs just kind of kicking the can can or something. And they just, uh, they just really are fun. And of course I like color and I like whimsy and I like, uh, I like kind of girly designs. So I thought it'd be fun to make it look like a flower just hanging. And when you wiggle and jiggle this, it really does have that kind of like dancing ballerina feel to it and it's very easy to make. So what you're going to need for this earring, I'm going to move those out of the way, is you're going to need four um, eye pins, so like a head pin, but they've got a little loop on the end. You're going to need an acrylic flower, like a kind of a trumpet style flower, a um, oval bead. This is a glass one for a little bit of weight. And then I've got three little plastic leaves. I've got two small ones and one medium size one there. And these are all ones I had in my stash. So please feel free to substitute with whatever you have. So what we need to do is we need to make our dangle pieces and we're gonna offset them just like we, they did in the Annie's pattern here. So each of these dangles is a little bit different in length. So we get a long, a medium, and a short one. So I'm gonna start off by adjust, by kind of setting the length. So there's my long one. Just gonna make a corn, just gonna make a, a, a bend. I'm gonna make a medium one, a little bit shorter than the long one. And I like to set, kind of set them out just to make sure that I do have them a little bit different. And then I'm going to make a short one. The other one we're going to leave alone. Okay, we're just doing this on three. Okay, there we go. So now on the long one, we are going to put our bigger leaf. So I'm going to make a simple loop here. Going to cut this about a quarter of an inch from my bend. You see that? And I am just going to loop this up. You need to make it big enough that you're going to be able to fit your um, your your bead in there. I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to put on my biggest bead because this is the longest one. You're going to repeat this with the two smaller leaves that you have. So you're going to have three dangles made. Now you're going to open your jump ring, and you are going to slide on each of the dangles that you made. So they are hanging from this. Now you don't have to do this. Um, you can actually just put all of these directly onto this head pin, but this is going to give you more movement if you have a jump ring there. So that's completely up to you what you want to do. And then we're going to close this up. Okay, that jump ring is closed. We've got all three of those dangles on our other eye pin. Look at them go. Aren't they cute? So much movement and so light. I love it. Okay, now we are going to take our flower. These are so fun. I love acrylic flowers and they're very inexpensive. You can get big bags of them for a few dollars and so fun to make jewelry with kids and even I like them. I, I make them for me. Um, and so then we get a lot of good movement there and some of the apparatus is hidden inside the flower, which is nice. If you didn't use a jump ring, all of those little loops would be hidden way up inside the earring, but you wouldn't have as much movement because they wouldn't be able to swing so free. And then we're going to put that glass bead on top just to give it a little bit of weight. And then we're going to finish it up just like we would normally by doing a simple loop and hooking it to a earring finding. So we do our bend. We're going to snip about a quarter of an inch away. We're going to roll it up and then put it on our ear wire. And that is how we make this beautiful um, kind of, these are like beautiful fairy earrings. They have such a nice, long, beautiful dangle, but they're not heavy. I love long dangly earrings, but they're usually just way too heavy for me. So this is a great solution for that. Now I'm going to show you the final two designs from this Annie Simply Beads Kit of the Month Club. And uh, one is one I didn't replicate because they are hoops. And although hoops are pretty and I like the way they look, I personally don't like to wear hoops. When I was in high school, there was a girl who got the ear got hoop earrings pulled out of her ears in uh, gymnastics. And so I've been kind of freaked out by hoop earrings ever since then. So I don't personally wear hoops very often. So um, I don't have the hoop findings or anything. So I'm not going to be replicating these, even though they're really pretty. 
Um, and then I've got these, which I really love the chandelier style earring, um, but I tend not to wear these too often because they're a little heavier because you've got the metal chandelier part and then you've got the glass beads or pearls that are kind of heavy. But I did love the design and I thought it'd be a nice gift uh, project to make. So I went through my stash and I found that I have these pretty kind of like, they almost look like a... Um, I don't know, like a musical instrument, like a mandolin or something, um, gold finding, which I thought was really pretty. And I like green. I think green and gold look really pretty together, pretty together. So I put those together for this earring. So I already put my earring finding on this uh, chandelier portion and just got to make sure that when you put a, like a fish hook style earring onto one of these metal pieces that you have the decorative part, which will be kind of like embossed um, and the round part of your hook towards the front. And then you know, that will hang so that you have that pretty detail in the front of your earring. So I made a couple dangles already and instead of using a regular head pin I'm using a ball ended head pin so it looks like you have a little gold bead on the end already so you get that extra detail without adding any extra weight which is kind of um, important when you're using something with like a heavy like chandelier attachment then you're simply going to put your beads on so I just did one uh, teardrop for the two dangles on the end and I did a teardrop and just like a regular round bead for the dangle in the center so it would hang a little bit lower just like my inspiration piece the inspiration piece the middle uh, dangle was a little bit longer and we're going to go ahead and turn this into a simple loop just like we would on all the other pieces that we've done so far and then to make the earrings just like um, just like it says in the instructions for those we're just going to put our dangles onto the loops on our earring. Now sometimes I've noticed if I'm ever using like an antique gold or um, sometimes gold for some reason, gold finish rather than silver finish, I sometimes will have an issue with the um, with my head pins snapping. Uh, like I feel like the like gold wires and definitely antique wires cannot take as much working as like the um, the silver wires do so you do have to be careful just make sure you have a couple extra head pins um, when you're working just in case you need to in case you break one and you have to re restring it the thing i like about the annie's kits is they do come with extras so if you do break a head break a head pin or break your wire you have an extra piece that you can work from um, it happens especially if you're a beginner and you're let's see i just did it right there if you're a beginner and you're overworking your wire so what you do in that event is um, you just cut off your head pin and you make a new one, make a new simple loop. It's easy as that. But you do want to make sure you have a couple extra just in case that happens. So to prevent overworking, try to um, try to make your loop in one movement if you can. You know, don't overwork the same piece of wire more than once if you can help it. Um, just try to be very gentle with it. You don't want to keep opening and closing and opening and closing because that's what's going to weaken your wire and make it more likely to um, to break in the future or break while you're working it. So that's just something to keep in mind as you're working. Always make sure you have an extra one just in case you need it. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you found this inspirational and I hope you get your beads out and you make some really fun stuff. And if you've ever been thinking about subscribing to a Kid of the Month Club, I think you really ought to give the Annie's Simply Beads Kid of the Month Club a try. I know you may be like me and you have tons of supplies at home and you're thinking, oh, I really ought to use what I have before I get something new. But think of it as the education because you get so many new project ideas. And after you make the project from the kit, you can take your patterns and you can apply it to what you already have and come up with some really cool new designs that you never would have thought of before. So I really think it's worth the investment just for the ideas alone. It's not very expensive either. Your first kit is $9.99 plus shipping and handling. And then after that, each of your monthly kits is $19.99 plus shipping and handling. And if you're not absolutely thrilled with the kit, you can send it back and owe nothing. So it really is affordable and risk-free. I want to thank you so much for watching today. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. Until next time, happy crafting!